Hey everybody, welcome back to our little series on vertex operator algebras. Today is super exciting. Having finished with the Vida Soto algebra for now, we're going to investigate one final Lie algebraic concept, which is that of graded dimension. The graded dimension is akin to the partition function of statistical mechanics or conformal field theory, and may be relevant to those of you who have some experience with string theory. Let V be an S graded vector space for some set S. The graded dimension of V is defined as the formal sum over the equally formal variable X, with coefficients taken to be the dimensions of the various subspaces of homogeneous degree. Note that in all constructions that follow, we require the dimension of each of the subspaces of homogeneous degree to be finite. This restricts to the type of algebra that we'll consider. We'll see a more in-depth study of these formal sums in our next chapter. For W, a graded subspace of V, the graded dimension of the quotient space is the difference of v and w. The subtraction is treated coefficient by coefficient. The graded dimension of a direct sum of arbitrarily many vector spaces is similarly additive, assuming of course that the sum of dimensions of fixed homogeneous degree are individually finite. If S is an abelian group, we can consider the tensor products of graded vector spaces, for which the formal sums also factorize. This sort of multiplication has a peculiar definition to ensure finiteness, where here there are finitely many non-zero pairs a sub m and b sub n for each value of m plus n. Again, if s is abelian, you may recall that we can shift the grading at will by a fixed element, beta. For such a shift, the graded dimension is scaled by x to the beta. This is exactly the kind of shift that we saw in lecture last time. Of course, the million dollar question is, what is the graded dimension of the symmetric algebra over V, which was used in a lot of the modules that we've studied so far? To that end, we first observed that the symmetric algebra of a Z-graded vector space amounts to the symmetric tensor product over the symmetric algebra over the spaces of fixed homogeneous dimensions. The graded dimension of S of V is then the product over the positive integers of the infinite sums over positive K, the symmetric powers of V, of the dimensions of the individual subspaces. To better see this, notice that the dimension of the kth symmetric power of some vector space W is the binomial factor dim W plus K minus one choose K. Put in terms of a product of binomial series, we can use the binomial identity to format the sum to something that might be more familiar. We now consider the specific cases of our Heisenberg algebras, taking care to note that the symmetric tensor products are over negatively graded spaces of H hat Z. Written as a product, we find, following FLM and general mathematics convention, we prefer to work with a large positive powers of the formal variable. So in this case, we flip x to the reciprocal of q and finally observe that dimension of each individual graded space is unity. The result might shock you, or at least it should. Inspecting our graded dimension of Heisenberg modules, we see Euler's totient function staring at us in the face. Well, actually, Euler's phi is defined on whole numbers, counting the number of positive integers relatively prime to the argument, but this form is also intimately related to something else that is defined on the complex upper half plane. Indeed, consider the graded dimension of our celebrated shifted Heisenberg modules M. This shift amounts to the scaling of phi of Q by Q to the one over 24, which is crazy cool because together they manifest as the Dedekind eta function, a modular form of weight one half. And this connection with modular forms hints at how moonshine will enter our discussion of vertex operator algebras. Incidentally, the graded dimension of m one half is related to the ratio of eta with eta to the q to the one half. And that's our show. And that's also the end of chapter one. Congratulations on making it this far. 
We've got lots more ground to cover, but we are now well-equipped to study operator algebras. See you in chapter two. Thank you.